Looks like Cole's down here in the shop gonna steal our square, so we're gonna call it the, the... I gotta write my name on it, because otherwise Justin and Roman are gonna steal it from me. They're gonna be like, hey, you took my square! Because this is a relatively new square. Yeah. Uh, not yours. CC on it. What's that mean? Coles, Coles. Or put DC, or... I'll think about it a little bit. Thieves, thieves. We got Zach. I guess he's gonna start attacking the big round baler, see if he can find anything that's wrong with it. So hopefully he doesn't look too hard. I'm working on the JCB skid loader. Hopefully we can get that oil leak fixed. Bucket starting to tilt. There must be water in the bucket. So now it's starting to drip out here. We'll see if we can tip it back. To the mess, here we go. Well, everything's gotta be nice and oily now. We got an oil line leaking down here in the little JCB. Cooper went to get some parts. Hopefully they're the right parts. But this little fitting right here is leaking. It goes way down in there. You know, we'll see if we can get that apart. Oh boy. Kinda show you here what broke. This is a little fitting that goes into a block back there that oil pumps through, hydraulic oil. This is the line I cut. Here's the new two pieces that we got to fit, hopefully, the oil leak. This little piece right here, and ah, my finger won't move. This little piece here that my finger is pointing on, that will go over a rubber line. Then the rubber line will push into here and this will screw on. $86 just for this little piece right here, 86 bucks. That's why some of the work these equipments do, things ain't cheap because of parts like this, 86 bucks. We are hoping this repair job takes care of the leaking because every time we've had to take that line off or it's not working, it sits there and drips and it empties out our hydraulic tank, which kind of gets a little expensive and messy. The coop's going to fill it up right now with hydraulic oil and that's what kind of gets the guy sometimes is the price of parts. We fall over, some of the parts is like, are you joking me? And the other parts, you think they're going to be really expensive and you might be happy with, but when you start messing with a lot of this stuff. In the last couple days we dug a couple graves. We got a couple more coming up. And we got one for tomorrow. So me and Cooper are loaded up. He's going to bring the skid loader. I'm bringing the backhoe. But we're heading to a cemetery that we're going to be kind of on a hill. See what it looks like. It's one of those spots sometimes like, no, no, I don't want to be out there. But we got Cooper pulling in now. He's going to get the skid loader. So let's get to the cemetery and get the day going here. All right, we made it, guys. Some of these cemeteries, there's not a lot of room for us to park. So we have to park on the road. There ain't the widest road in the world here, but we can't park in the ditch. Everything's too steep, so we do what works. So if you ever come along and we're parked on the road, we apologize about that, but we don't have much choice. Otherwise, you'd have to park about a mile away. I think I grabbed Cooper's coat by accident today. So hopefully this ain't as good coat. We gotta get in that little corner over there. They don't leave much room for getting our equipment in. So this is what makes it hard sometimes. The stones get really close, get really tight. And I think we're forgotten sometimes about getting equipment in to do the hole. So it makes it a challenge at times. This is part of the cemetery. We're running into rocks right now. So I'm running some rocks. It's all about that big around. The biggest I've ever ran into was probably this big, just a big honker. So hopefully we don't hit that today. Probably kind of hard to see it on the video, but we're on a pretty good slope.
We're gonna do clean up now, but when I was getting on the bottom of that grave, I'm about five foot six inches deep. I'm running into some pretty good sized rocks. I was able to skim over them. The bottom's flat. We were gonna stop. Normally we go around six foot, but I'm just afraid I'm gonna dig up a can of worms. The ground is a little bit soft here, so I don't wanna go too deep because the chances of cave off is better. Bigger chance of cave off deeper as you go. Just caved off. Yeah. Huh. So I suppose better move the dirt and kind of cave her a little bit down. This area in the cemetery, I don't know. It's always been a pain in the butt. Cooper and I, we had a little cave off. There's a vault on the other side, meaning there's already a burial there. That's been in the ground since 1983. Normally the dirt's good and packed, but when you're digging above and right beside, well, I should say, when you're digging beside another vault, the dirt's looser usually. So what happened was started caving off above the vault and then took some off the side. Now we're just re-cleaning the hole out. Hopefully she'll stay. Up the big ramps. Yeehaw. Something a guy don't think about when we're out here at the cemetery. Like today, we got the skid loader. Then we have to have a pickup that pulls the skid loader. We have a trailer that's got to be for the skid loader. You got the semi to pull the backhoe. We got the backhoe trailer. You got the backhoe. Gets to be a lot of wheels on the ground. The grave digger, this is the machine we use out in the cemetery when the ground is frozen. It's got like 360 teeth, 36 and a half inches wide, I think it is. It goes down in the frozen ground and it can pull itself eight feet long to make a perfect grave. We only like to use this and we really hate to use it but if the ground is super, super froze, we use this. Something I don't like to use a lot if we don't have to because it's harder. Frozen ground is hard on stuff. We've been working on it, kind of checking it over. A couple weeks ago, it got set outside, not good. So we're gonna run it over, put it in the cold storage. So let's hope it starts. One thing, this thing, Three wheel drive, it runs off all three wheels. Two wheels back there, one wheel right here. Usually when we run this machine, it is so cold out, nobody wants to be outside. In a way, it's kind of a simple machine, but in a way, it's kind of a picky little machine also. This is probably the biggest thing of all when you're pulling down the road, this little bugger. You gotta make sure, take the wheels out of gear, otherwise you take off, you hear and not good. Well, I think we're all right. I know what you're probably thinking right now. What are you doing now, Daddy Cornstar? Well, need to wash my truck. It's really not. Hi, Ellie. Hey, girl. Hey, you go lay down. You know better. Go on, go up and count the butterflies. You move it. Go on, Ellie, move it. Move it. We are using the ProLine soap. Get on the description down below. You can check it out. This is what we use to keep our vehicles clean though. I'm going to uh, spray it on this truck. Let it sit for probably five minutes because it's not over dirty. And then we'll rinse it off and make her look nice. Oh, shaving cream. I'm going to let it soak on for about five minutes and then we'll rinse it off. And then we got this ProLine wax also that I'd like to spray on it. And that's green. This stuff is kind of a purplish color. Hey, you go out there and chase the beetles around. You don't chase the one. Warning. Warning. Next time, 
You'll get warned again. Now go lay down. Don't look at me like that, dog. I'm the boss. I don't want you to be chasing the wand, because otherwise you think it's fun to chase things, and you'll start chasing vehicles. No. So be good. You'll be going sitting in time out. We'll put a cone on your head. And this is our wax. We're going to spray it on now, leave it on for three or four minutes, and then we'll wash it off with cold water. I'm actually spraying it on with cold water also. I got a question for everybody and maybe some of you uh, furnace guys, plumbing guys, maybe you kind of know. Our hot water heating system up here on the wall, that is an instant demand. So when our floor heat says it needs heat, that kicks in. The last couple years we've been having issues with it where when it kicks in, the pump, the machine will kick in and then all at once, Boom! It's a big boom. And I've had a couple different guys out here working on it. I, I don't know what to do. It doesn't seem like they've got it repaired and I don't know if it's stumping them too. I'm not, you know, but I've been spending a lot of money on it. This year we had the guts tore apart inside. They put a new igniter and I don't know what all they did inside, but I got a nice healthy bill right away boom i know they came back out and looked at it and boom it just kicked in i hope one of these days when i'm filming it will kick in i mean it is a big boom it almost seems like it's going to blow off the wall i'm stumped i don't know what to do or who to call i need to call the repairman back see if he can do something kind of frustrating when you want to get the problem fixed and i know a lot of the repairmen right now it just seems like they're busy and it's hard for them if but Ah, it's nerve wracking. So what I was asking, maybe some of you guys, and I know some of this stuff is hard when the repairman comes out. They don't always do it when they're here. So it's hard sometimes to fix a problem. But I thought, well, maybe one of you guys out there had the same issue. What maybe made yours or what did you do to get it repaired? But I love that floor heat. And I know, and I know sometimes a guy works on one thing it could be two or three other things that's causing the same issue you know just because you repair one end maybe that's acting up too and so i know that i'm not trying to blame the repairman but i know it's getting expensive and <sighs>